People always say, you know, kitchen is the heart of a home and blah, 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 because so much happens there. Even if it's a crappy kitchen, you still have this emotional attachment to it. So what if we design it to actually do what we want a kitchen to do? You know, when I started doing this, I had two goals. One was to only build the things that we wanted to build. And the other goal uh, was, was to make a shop that I wanted to come to and everybody else wanted to come to every day. You know, a nice place to work. My mom went to school for interior design. She wove baskets and did different kinds of weaving and stuff. And was a pretty prolific basket maker for a long time. My dad went to school for architecture. I wasn't living in a house where there was an architect drafting things up, but he was always working on the house and, you know, taking the chance on cutting a wall out and <laughs> adding a stairway here or there or whatever. And uh, when I got to school for industrial design, you know, I remember one of my classmates during a critique saying, why the hell are you making this? Nobody needs this. And he was really right. There's not so much need in the world for another coffee table. Like, there's a lot of them out there to choose from. The thing that I could do, though, which Ikea can't do, and which Crate and Barrel can't do, and all the other big companies out there making furniture, is I can make something specific for somebody. I was at Rhode Island School of Design for furniture design, and discovered Kerf Design just by searching RISD alum. I called him and asked to see his shop. I mean, I just, I just consider myself lucky that Shara came along. She had that understanding of, you know, doing something well and intentionally. Well, when things are well built, you can love them well, right? Because they're not going to fall apart on you. It's one less thing to worry about and you can just, like, enjoy the thing. We consider all the details. If we have to figure out how to make a, a you know, heat register, or airflow, like we're not going to do it in an ugly way. I was at the bank. There's this guy with a Kerf shirt. I was like, oh, you work at Kerf, that's awesome. I really love your guys' work, blah, 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 blah. Like, how do you like it there? And he's like, yeah, I like it okay. You know, it's, it's pretty good. I started talking to him afterwards, and I'm like, if you guys ever have an opening, let me know. You know, because I'd love to work with you guys. And he's like, oh yeah, stop by the shop sometimes. So like three months later, I find myself in this area and I stop by and, and I see the guy with the curve shirt. And I'm like, oh, hey, Nate, man, how you doing? He's like, oh yeah, yeah, I remember you. I was like, well, is your boss around? I brought my resume. And he's like, oh, well, I am the boss. I, I own Curve. And I kind of figured, I was like, that's a really cool mentality. Like he didn't right off the bat say, oh, I own Curve. Nate was getting press about his shop in like, I think Sunset or something. I think I remember Nate saying, there are these people that are ordering our stuff from New Jersey and I have no idea who they are. Like, I don't, that's weird. Like, he was just like, I don't know who these people are anymore. And they're ordering my stuff, that's great. Yeah, that was, that was like 2007, 2008, I think. Um, yeah, like things started to slow down and we everyone started noticing and we're like okay well you know I'm gonna start doing side projects and then that uh, one day when Nate came out I mean he was like almost in tears like and then he pretty much told us he's like I've done the numbers and I after the end of this month I won't be able to pay you guys and the coolest thing was and I remember I remember this like it was yesterday everybody chimed in and was like well you know if you need help I'll come in here for free and help keep Kirk going I don't know, it's always been a goal of mine to build this business into something that, that could stand on its own. Like if I, if I were to vanish from the picture, you could take the concept of you know, what, we're, what we've been building and why it's built the way it's built and everything, and it could keep going. Every time I go back to my parents' house, I notice details, or maybe, I think probably when my wife was pregnant, we were looking up in their barn for a crib that they had had. They're like, oh, you should find that crib, you know, see if you can use that crib. And we're like, okay, let's go find it. And we, you know, up in the top of the barn, you know, dug it out, brought it down. So it's this dark brown wood shipping crate. But he painted the inside bright, bright green. I hadn't seen that crate for, you know, 30 years. I was like, oh, that's, that's why that makes sense to me. 
I remember I was on my way to the farm and I was gonna, cause I started doing farmer's markets and then like still like talking to Nate and figuring out like, you know, helping him once in a while. And I started a conversation and this person's like, who do you work for? But I, I work for Curve Design and they knew who Curve Design was. And it was like out in Walla Walla, Washington, you know, it's like, okay. And then they start going off. Like, oh yeah, we saw your, your kitchen article in Dwell Magazine and then we, we actually like went to a friend's house and they had a curved kitchen. It was so great to see it in person. I was like, wow, okay. And then I just remember him calling me and he was like, Zach. And it was like, I can hear like, there's like a little bit of joy, you know, in his voice. He was like, Zach, like, are you ready to come back to Curf? And I was like talking to everybody. I was like, I got my job back, like Curf lives on. So it's kind of weird to think like, you know, humans interacting with objects in an emotional way, but it happens all the time. When we live with them for a long time, we develop a relationship with them. And suddenly it's like they become, yeah, they become more than material. It's funny thinking that this project that I started, you know, 15 years ago, now has five people working on it all the time and probably needs more people working on it and that there's enough people out there in the world that like it and want to support it. I mean, that's just crazy to me to, to think. Um, it doesn't make any sense, but, but it's pretty cool. You know, in, in a lot of ways, it's become our thing.